Gary King is back with the very first solo album of his career, which on one hand sounds a lot like his previous albums, yet on the other one does not at all. So let's take a look at Gary King's From Hell I Rise, discuss its strong and its weak points, and then honestly answer the question whether it was worth all that hype. Here you go. Do the devil's work! The album opens with a short instrumental piece, Diablo, which somewhat introduces Carrie's new band members one by one, and simultaneously serves two important purposes. Firstly, it confirms what many fans expected, with this album being a direct follow-up to Slayer's last studio record, Repentless. As most fans know, it is exactly how the final 2015 Slayer act opened, with both tracks even having a very similar structure and overall function on the records. Secondly, it builds the momentum going, which Carrie and the team then keep through the entire album and shows that From Hell I Rise will be an absolute no compromise record, with no emotional roller coasters whatsoever, with no energy or mood swings, but rather straight in your face, aggressive and vigorous thrash metal Carrie King was always famous for, with the only question being is whether this is what you are looking for. <laughs> Where I Reign, which by the way, together with its intro Diablo, I am sure it will be a concert opener on pretty much the entire tour, just like it was in the first show played by the band, is exactly what you may expect from Kerry King, whether in Slayer or anywhere else. It is a straightforward banger on which Death Angel's Mark Osagata was able to somewhat mix the energy of Tom Araya on vocals with at the same time keeping his own trademark sound, giving it somewhat of a half-letter-era Slayer, half-Death Angel vibe, which, complemented by two brutal solos by Phil Dammel, makes it a perfect headbanger for all fans of classic thrash metal. That's where I That's where I On Residue, which was released as the second single to the album, Kerry King decreases the BPM, yet still manages to make the song sound even heavier than its predecessor. And I'd say that this is where we get to hear Mark in his full glory. With him putting so much anger and power into his vocals as he defies the system in the song's chorus, which makes it one of the strongest and most well-suited vocal parts on the entire record, and together with its sturdy rhythm section also makes you want to headbang to the very groovy, almost 1990s groovy beat. <laughs> Isle Hands, with which Kerry introduced his new band. And now, during my initial review of the track when it had just come out, I said that the opening riff to Idle Hands gives out a very classic 80s style thrash metal vibe, which if done correctly, and in this case it was done so, still sounds very fresh today in the 21st century, and I still very much stand by that statement today. In fact, I have to be honest with you and say that I wasn't too impressed by this song when it was just released, yet Idle Hands is one of those tracks which definitely opens up in a much better light when listened to among the other songs on the album, making it possibly one of, if not the strongest song on From Hell I Rise overall. <laughs> Trophies of the Tyrant, King once again dives deeper into the groovier side of his sound, with possibly the darkest song on From Hell I Rise, and that says a lot about its mood. Now, before the album's release, in one of the interviews, Gary actually said that he had to rewrite some of the lyrics on this record, and as a Ukrainian in Ukraine amidst the war, I have a feeling that Trophies of the Tyrant was one of those tracks. And in addition, I have to point out that despite being rather simple and straightforward, it might actually be my favorite song on the entire album. <laughs> and 
had the album Split Point, Carrie and the band pick up the energy once again. And now, I said that the album doesn't offer much of a roller coaster ride to its listener, yet at the same time, if there would absolutely have to be a climax of some sort, it would definitely be on Crucifixation, which, by the way, oddly enough, is not only one of the most vigorous, but also happens to be the longest track on this record. Yet still at only 5 minutes and 14 seconds, which I guess wouldn't even be considered a track by some of the bands in the modern age. <laughs> and thus ends the first half of the record. And therefore here, as always, would be a good time to come to the first conclusions about From Hell I Rise. So let's do it. On his solo debut, Kerry King decided to not fix what isn't broken and give his loyal fans exactly what they expected, although there will actually be a couple of surprises on the second half of the album. But regardless of that, From Hell I Rise picks up exactly where Slayer left off in 2019. So if you are a fan of Kerry's work in Slayer, no, not like that, if you are a fan of Carrie's work in the latest era of Slayer, I'm sure that you will be fond of what From Hell I Rise has to offer. Although, in all honesty, not taking into account the song's compositions, it actually is not only Carrie's merit. For his solo project, Carrie can gather together not just any kind of band. He Compiled a freaking supergroup where everyone is at the right place and knows exactly what to do to make their joint experience work together in great synergy. And this is true for a steady rhythm section crafted by Paul Bostoff and Kyle Sanders, surprising and on point solos by Phil Dammel, and of course for the great job done by Marcus Gatta, who is bringing a tiny bit of Death Angel sound into the mix. And by the way, talking about Death Angel, I said it once and I'll say it again. In my opinion, Death Angel is actually one of the most overlooked bands in the genre who definitely deserve way more attention. And I kinda hope that with Mark in the spotlight now, more metalheads will discover their work for themselves. And this collaboration will not only not slow down the Bay Area thrashers, but it will give them strength to finally come up with some new material soon. But anyway, at least so far, From Hell and Rise gives Slayer fans absolutely no surprises. You get exactly what you pay for and what you expect from Kerry King, who, as he said, is a huge Slayer fan himself, and so in a way this is not really a new beginning. I know that some compare Kerry King and Slayer to KK's Priest and Judas Priest, but in my opinion this is not really a correct comparison, as Kerry King actually picks up where Slayer left off and develops a continuation to their discography of a sort. As I guess most would agree that musically From Hell I Rise could easily be a follow-up to Repentless. Oh and by the way guys, since we're having a little break here, I just wanted to point out that only around 20% of the people who watch my videos are actually subscribed to the Metal Pilgrim channel. So if you still haven't done so, and especially if this is not your first video you're watching on this channel, I would really appreciate it if you would consider doing it right now. Let's continue building this amazing heavy metal community together. We're gonna have a good time. Always. The second half opens with Tension, which 100% lives up to its name. And although it is a great song and musically might actually be one of the most interesting ones on the record, I doubt it will ever be played live because of its rather long build-up, something I definitely cannot say about its follow-up. Everything I Hate About You is the shortest, yet possibly one of the most aggressive songs on the album. At 1 minute and 21 seconds, it actually is shorter than the instrumental intro piece, and also is the most thrash metal-like counterpart of the famous song by the Romantics. What I like about you? Overall, in the second half of the album, Carrie brings an even more straightforward approach with much shorter tracks, including the following Toxic, which criticizes modern culture and toxicity in our today's society, and even more so on Two Fists, on which, to our surprise, Carrie King goes back to the very roots of thrash metal, bringing a heavier punk rock sound onto the record, which I'm sure will be one of the most fun songs to headbang and get crazy to on all future live shows. According to 
Gary himself, Rage was one of the two songs which got carried over from Slayer's Repentless sessions, and in all honesty, this is actually rather audible. As yes, every song on this album of course sounds like a direct descendant from Slayer, yet when it comes to Rage, somehow and maybe subconsciously, it just screams Slayer. And you can absolutely imagine Tom Araya taking a lead on the vocals on this No Remorse soundtrack to a violent riot. Yeah! Thus we come to the final two songs of the album, Shrapnel and the album's title track From Hell I Rise. And here's the thing, while listening to the album for the very first time without looking at the track list, I immediately thought that Shrapnel was in fact a perfect album closer. And I was kind of surprised Carrie placed yet another song, picking up the energy level once again after a perfect ending for a short three and a half minutes long track. And to this very day, I actually think that at the very least, these two tracks should have been switched. And while we're on it, I have another coming out to do. Gary Kane said that he wanted to call his new band something absolutely different, yet whatever name he came up with was already taken by some obscure Eastern European band. You know? And he only settled on the name Gary Kane when he was shown a potential logo, which he loved so much. And here's the thing, it is actually this logo and the whole anti-Christian imagery is what I don't like on this record. Now, hear me out and please try to understand what I am saying, but I actually believe that it is absolutely unnecessary on this album, and even more, today in the 21st century, it doesn't really provoke anyone anymore, if anything it does the opposite. And the music here is actually powerful and strong enough to stand without it, and it is actually such lyrics as the one on the title track, which kind of throw me off and take away from the experience of really enjoying this record. And well, now you heard the entire argument, so you're welcome to hate on me in the comments. But either way, both of those tracks basically sum up everything we've heard on From Hell I Rise so far, and in the album exactly the way it has started. Full of energy, aggression and vigor. So what about Kerry King's solo debut? Is it worth your attention? Well, if you are a Slayer fan, then definitely yes. But at the same time, you need to understand that this is the album which will not bring anything new to the table. It is not really supposed to. It is the record on which Kerry King does not deviate from his formula, continue doing exactly what he did on the latest Slayer outputs. And yet it doesn't quite sound like Slayer. When forming a new band, Kerry King could have easily hired some internet sensations who would sound exactly like his old bandmates, but instead he went with the guys who have an unmistakably standout sound of their own, which even though Kerry had an unlimited creative freedom, this time not even guided by Tom or anybody else, those styles very much infused the sound of the final product. And yet still, this is the album for the fans, for Slayer fans not the new ones. And if you are such, well, then I guess you will absolutely get the kick out of this one. But anyways, what do you guys think about the singles which have already come out, and if you're watching it after the album was released, what do you think about this record overall? Please let us know in the comments as well as whether you are planning to see Kerrigan live this year. Thank you so much for watching the video, guys, and we will prevail. Slava Ukraine!